I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Well, first of all, where have we got with a claim to fame? Because this is none other than Seton's Clutch, the one, the only, the definitive Faf map. I'm sure you've all seen it before. We'll talk about it a little bit in a minute for those who don't. But first of all, let's meet the teams. Top team, bottom team, easy enough. In the air position for top team, this is Protect. He's 2200 rated, he's Eon in red. Moving on to the rock position, we have Resistance, also 2200 rated in Fico Brown. He is also Eon. And he's opened first air, which is something I commonly see from rock players. You can see he's got, well, he's going to have some um, power problems unless he sends out an engineer to get to these trees. And you'll see this first two engineers are both going out to get tree reclaim while he builds these power. So he's able to go four mechs first, despite having built an air factory. So that's how you do that. In the forward position, this is Kuva Klima Kleber, 2000 rated, also Eon, so that's three Eons so far on the top team, in purple. And finally for the top team we have Orand. At 1100 he's the lowest rated player in the game. He's UEF, which means that we don't have a full Eon sweep for the north. And he's in dark blue. Now for their opponents on the bottom team. In the air position, this is Foley. He's 2300 rated in orange and he too is Eon. In the rock position and also opening first air, this is Nori. At 2500 he's the highest rated player in the game. He's Seraphim in grey. In the forward position, and is he already forward, this fellow is Fat Hamster, 1400 rated, also Eon, so we got 5 out of 8 Eon today, and in Baby Blue. And finally for the bottom team, and also opening first air in the beach position, this is Leon Killer, 1200 rated, UEF, in yellow and how's Leon Killer managing his power he's also got lots of trees to reclaim but he's keeping it well balanced I like to see that now what have we got going on well there's a lot of reclaim in the middle on Seton's heaps it's one of the main features and so these boys are going to fight about it but first of all we have to check this transport out from resistance more commonly known as Resi so that's what I'll be calling him this game and it has been seen and an inti is locked onto it. Now these islands are obviously quite key to claim for the rock players because there are five vectors each. But look at this lovely micro from Rezi. He dodges back and forth, the inti misses it. And he's able to offload all five NGs from the transport before it gets shut down. Lovely play. Meanwhile in the middle, Fat Hamster has erected a PD. Normally I wouldn't do that because that's wasting time that you could otherwise be using to get reclaim. But Orand has not come up in support, and we can see on the minimap there that Leon is coming up in support of Hamster. And so Hamster has been able to grab quite a lot of this reclaim that would normally go to Kuva while he's protected by this PD. However, Kuva is on his way to gun and he is laying damage down on Hamster. He won't have the range because he's Eon unless he stays rooted to the spot for even longer. I don't think he will. I think he'll just come in and try and drive Hamster away. He's already got the hit point advantage and as soon as he gets speed... But there's a bit of light artillery here for Hamster but Kuva will dodge that. And dodge he does and this second point defense I think is unlikely to go up. Well, it does go up, so I was just wrong about that, but 
That looks like some good overcharge work from Kuva, who's going to shoot it down, and Hamster is into the red. And Hamster falls back towards his PD. The PD opens up, and that will get some damage done on Kuva, but I don't know if Hamster is going to survive this. 1,000 hit points, 900, 800, 2, boom! But Kuva is deep into the red as Hamster dies. The screen is lit up in white fire as Kuva explodes, but he's only got 700 hit points left and he is fleeing for his life. He comes back though thinking, I can take the Salem Rex, but Leon Killer's com has just arrived on the scene, fresh and ready to fight. And he's reclaiming, but do you think he knows that he could probably take Kuva if Kuva were to come forward? As it is though, Kuva's going to get those Salem reps, and they're 500 mass each, which is not to be sniffed at. Leon heads across. He's under a bit of fire, but nothing really to damage him, and he fires on Kuva, who retreats for the water. He's got a little way to go though. 400 hit points, 300. 200 hit points for Kuva, but he's under the water, and he escapes Leon's attentions. Only just, Leon looks like he's ground firing to try and damage the com, but Kuva is now in too deep. Orand, meanwhile, sends a bomber to pick up some engines here, and it's already got some kills going, that's four so far, and another drop gets some more kills, so this bomber raid will certainly slow up the build power that Nori can put on his naval yard. An air defense is going up, Two of the bomber, uh, two of the um, NGs are denied by the bomber, which means that it's now got eight kills to its name. But it's shot down, and it doesn't claim the ninth. Still, that was a lot of good NG kills for that bomber. I'm certain it paid for itself. Now Leon too has been forced to enter the water as Kuva advances with his tanks. And Nori has got a bunch of tanks coming up from the base that he inherited from Hamster, but they're not there yet. So Leon will have to be careful in managing his exit from the water. And that said though, Kuva isn't pushing with these tanks. Maybe he wants to wait for a fight since he's got the gun upgrade. Oh, but he's also deep, deep into the red still, so... He can't afford to use his comm, lest Leon just come and shoot him. Quick look at the naval situation. All four players whom you would expect to have navy have got some navy. Quite a good force here being massed by Resi, who has two factories, both of which are being assisted. I think he might be able to outdo Leon in the water at reasonably short notice here. One heavily assisted factory there from Nori, and one slightly less thanks to that bomber work from Orand, but Orand only has one moderately assisted factory in the water on his side, so I don't know if that's going to go as well for him. Both rock players are looking like they're ready to dominate the beach players and looks like Resi is planning to support his with T1 bombers. These subs could be a good answer from Leon though as there are at present no submarines coming up from Resi and so he has no answer to them. They will just be able to pick away at these units without being shot but Subs do quite slow damage compared to frigates, and it could be they just won't do enough damage before these frigates and bombers from Resi can come in and just take out the naval yard from Leon, and if they do, that will be a very early naval lock. Look at that damage going down, NG's first, good choice from Resi. And now there's nothing really to save this factory. Three frigates, four frigates, and four bombers, and inti screen from Resi means that this factory is not long for this world and then sure these subs will still be able to harass Resi 
but there won't be any more and the naval lock will be complete and it looks like some of them surfaced to try and get a bit of extra firepower and just died or perhaps that was a very well placed bomb I didn't see but down goes the naval yard and as if that wasn't enough Rezzy is already at T2 with his naval yard and producing a destroyer I suppose Leon could get back into the water over here if he tried, but it would be quite difficult to manage. So a very early naval win in the bottom pond for top team. When we compare that to the top pond, it feels again as if Nori has more in the way of units, but not only is there a little more defensively from Orund, not much but some, but also we've got Kuva bringing in naval production of his own over here. The centre has become what you often see in the centre on Seaton's just walled up, a few defensive units, a couple of point defences, nothing really to worry about either way. So we do have some submarines out for Orand and Nori, just like Resi going the other way, hasn't got any underwater firepower to defend against them, so he's actually going to lose a few here because that's a decent haul, but what's this engineer drop? Is it planning to try and do something about these subs? Nope, nope. Are we going to see a beachhead? That would be pretty fun. That's a big horde of engineers. Let's see where that goes. Okay, that's landing here and it's going straight for a torp launcher. Now the subs can't target these engineers as seraphim engineers. They hover. So he's using that invulnerability to go straight for torps as fast as he can and hope that it will see off these submarines and immediately it opens fire they turn on the torp launchers and try and take them down but that's a lot of build power for Nori he's throwing them up And I think he's going to work his way through these subs because after the recent patch, I say recent, it's best part of a year ago now, after the recent patch, T1 top launcher are a bit buffed and I think he'll be in a position, the submarines flee, he'll be in a position to set up naval production over here. Same story for Rezzy in the South Pond, who's been landing engineers across here and is setting up his own naval production to consolidate on the fact that he now owns this pond. Now, Rezzy is definitely thinking of bombarding from the shore because he's putting out destroyers even though he's won water and he hasn't gone for any other tech that I can see. On the other side though, Nori has gone for T3 Air so perhaps he's planning to support Foley in that. <coughs> and he still has his pond to win. There are now two factories for Kuva as well as a couple for Orand. but I'm wondering what he's going to do with that T3 air. Obviously I'm hoping for com drops, but you can't have everything. Down here, on the other side, those destroyers are beginning to inflict damage on on space. He's got his T2 land HQ under threat here. He's lost Amex and Leon resigns. He's just standing in the middle here and he resigns. Now Nori will also inherit his stuff though I would expect him to give it over to Foley and indeed he does. So they're both the players are handling two bases. However, this base may not be long for this world because it's already lost two of its mixes too far from these destroyers. 
However, in order to real... Aha, yes, there we go. I was going to say, in order to really make progress here, Rezzy is going to need to get some land presence and immediately he starts setting up land factories with engineers that you've brought out of the water. There is still the potential to counter it and this riptide comes across trying to shut it down but I think it's going to die to the frigate fire and indeed it does. However, Foley's also got units coming in here and he might be able to clean it up. Ooh, look at that. Only just, but it is still denied by Foley. Good move there. On the top side, Nori is definitely winning. There are only a couple of factories left for Orand and they are surrounded by destroyers to the point where the destroyers are now focusing on Orland's eco rather than worrying about these factories which the frigates are clearing up. Orland does have torp bombers and there aren't any oh there is a cruiser in here so I don't think they're gonna last all that long and Orland is going to be driven back quite significantly especially if this cruiser can start getting tactical missiles onto Orland's mexes. Kuva is sending blazes, which he's got a silly naming mod on. Look, they're called Happy Golo, Happy Stefan, Happy Black Crow. Are they happy though, my friend? Are they happy? And it looks like Rezzy is getting a lot more done than Nori in the north. For one thing, his destroyers have an arc to their fire, unlike several from destroyers with beam weapons, so they can more easily handle the stuff back here. However, this is a good counter. Foley is putting up artillery. And we can see that it can range those destroyers and maybe even take a couple of them out but what's this I see over here I see Rezzy's com in a gifted T2 transport flying across and it's coming to land nope it's just flying at the moment where's it going to land is he going to try and land here and build a beachhead is he going to try and drop it further back into the base of Foley. But looking at the minimap, I see we also have to worry about the bases of Orand and Kuva, so I think it's time to go to split screen. So on the left, Rezzy is landing. We have artillery being put up en masse for Foley, and it looks like he's planning some shenanigans with this factory over here. He's also got T2 factories down here which could help produce something but look at the amount of spam production which we are seeing coming out from Resi. He's got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 17 factories queued up and this is the problem I was mentioning. Look at this Seraphim destroyer issue. They just can't shoot up the beach enough. However, Seraphim cruisers more than make up for that, and you can see that despite a bit of TMD, this cruiser was doing work getting through. We have a beachhead from Nori, but Kuva has sent his blazers in to fight it, and I think they're going to evict it. We also have Lobos and Metagreens from Orand and these factories are going to go down but at what cost the blazes are able to be shot by the destroyers here more blazes coming out here there's just enough navy though enough to take it down and is that a lab I see pootling out for Foley here? He's producing labs at an insane rate. Look at that. And so 
he's going to try and swarm Resi, but Resi has killed up yet more spam factories and a sneaky little TML. Let's see whether anything gets done there. And we see Resi starting Tech 3 Navy. He's going to try and add battleships to his bombardment. We can see on the mini map here that Nori has already got the Tech 3 Navy and has a battleship heading forward. And that would be good for bombarding up here onto Kuva's original base. And that TML starts firing. It's going to pick off that mix easy peasy and it's also firing at this T3 one. And it fires again. Looks like that's going in the same direction so it's quite likely that Resi knows that's T3 and knows it's going to take two shots to hit. Meanwhile he's massing labs of his own and we could be in for a big lab fight. First hit takes the T3 mix down to just 500 hits. Second one takes it out, beautifully judged from Resi. He also aimed at this one, but this TMD was enough to stop it. And the lab fight begins. Lots of little labs swarming around each other, shooting each other up. Foley, I think, actually has more despite this production here. But for everyone he shoots, more are produced by Resi. And that's quite a lot of battleships, so you can see that Nori's got coming forward now, though they're not yet in a position to do any damage. However, it's the cruiser pressure that Orland has to worry about. He's only got one TML left, he's lost four of his vexes here. He is massing torp bombers at the top, we can see. But, what are they going to achieve against that many cruisers? And... Oran has actually taken a decent amount of damage from that cruise of firepower. What's his plan? What can he do? Foley seems to have stopped with the lab shenanigan and he's focusing on this PD push that we can see here. And that could get work done because backed up by these there should be enough firepower just nice TMO to just drive the labs back and eventually start ranging these factories. Meanwhile Nori has dropped NGs in including a Tech 3 NG to start building point defences here and help reinforce Foldy's firebase. Some good teamwork there. On th this side Nori has tried another beachhead and he's building Zoe spam. But we do have Blazes massing again here for Kuva. And I think that's probably going to be enough to stop the Zooey's. But of course these are so close to the shore that any attempt to take these out will likely fall afoul of the destroyers. Meanwhile the cruisers head up here that where there's been an attempt to get back into the water by Oran which is now at Tech 2. And he's got a destroyer out but there's a destroyer here plus these cruisers. I think I know where my money's at. Here come the top bomb as we spoke of earlier. And that doesn't feel like it's going to be enough damage. One of the cruisers go... Okay, I'm, I'm just lying about that. Both cruisers down, that's only a destroyer. Nice work from Orand. And now these top bombers can pick off these destroyers without anything to counter them. Having seen that this is now impenetrable to him, Resi has focused his labs downward instead, and I think he will drive Foley off this position that we can see right here. But this RT that was originally put up to defend against the ships is now making inroads against Resi's beachhead. Look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 T1 factories destroyed by Foley's counter pressure.
So as he continues to swarm the labs, even though he's got far less to produce them now. And he builds more factories to produce them just a little further back, out of range of these PDs, if at first you don't succeed. And he's shielding his com just in case. Meanwhile though, those battleships we mentioned have come up to here, and they absolutely can bombard Kuva's base. Kuva is losing mexes fast to the battleship bombardment. At present, the northern team is ahead in eco by about 250 give or take but i don't reckon that's going to stay the case if these battleships keep up their bombardment and over here we can see that protect is going to try to do just that to our orland he has started on a gc and that will be able to come and clear up this if it wants to. We now have blazes and shields supporting Orond, but he's been knocked off his main eco here, so that's going to hurt. But he has still got Mexis back here, he hasn't been driven off his position here. So overall, I like top team's position rather better at present. And Rezi also has battleships firing across though I think he's more interested in this than he is in this and we have yet more hover spam coming through the middle here and down off the causeway for Kuva who is sending it to aid resistance and watch this I see some on the mini map there's one we can see right here torrent missile ships that would be brutal unless we see a vast amount of TND suddenly going up here because three torrents could just sit here and crush this base with nothing that Foley would be able to do in answer to them and it looks like Foley's defensive line is being pushed back a little bit as the battleship opens up on it. Covert is trying to rebuild. He's getting an upgrade on his comm. That feels quite dangerous if he's seen, because that battleship could just shoot him. But apparently he hasn't been seen yet. And this battleship is blocked by this little hill here from shooting this mech, so the terrain working in top team's favour. Meanwhile, how's that GC coming along? Well, it's nearly finished for Protect. And that should be able to push this back, because Norway isn't getting quite as entrenched as Resi has managed here. Those Hover units we mentioned coming down from Kuva, they're now onto the land. And as the battleship continues to fire, these torrents though, they're push pushing this space, and I don't like that so much. I think they need to be here, clearing away for Resi to push in. And indeed, Resi is building a GC of his own with which to charge, so I think there needs to be some pressure here. But Foley is also building a GC in defence, so. That could be a big fight with the spam from Lily versus the point defence from Foley, each supporting their experimentals. And speaking of experimentals, here is that GC coming forward from Protect. Will it protect? It's heading straight for this beachhead. And Nori has meanwhile set up more buildings up here, and this one he's actually teched up to T2. However, the GC is easily going to do enough damage to drive Nori off here before he finishes his GC. And he's shooting up a few of the boats, but it's taking a lot of damage from multiple battleships, and I think the tech needs to retreat. Or go and kill that, but I mean, he obviously knows about it because it's shooting at Orland, but he seems to think that discretion is the better part of valor and he is pulling a little bit back. 
Vancouver, meanwhile, is boarding a transport. What's he got on him? Well, we'll find out when he lands. Where's it going? Nice air screen to protect him, coming across from Protect. Doing his job and living up to his name adequately. And looks like he's heading down here, so we'll see him on the other screen in just a moment. Meanwhile, we continue to have cruiser bombardment here, not getting through because of this vast number of buzzkills. Buzzkills aren't the greatest TMD, but in number they will still do their job. Down here, we have... Well, how's that GC doing? It's been noticed and it's almost finished, but we saw Foley, I think, finishing his. And Foley's is already well on the way up over here. So we could be in for quite a big fight. And look at the turret fire raining down on this base. Sure, there's TMD in there, but not enough to stop three turrets worth of firepower. Oh, I said three, but it's now one, two, three, four, five turrets worth of firepower. And here is... Here is Kruver landing with speed gun and T2 upgrades. T2? T3 upgrades. Straight into the path of a GC, but Reddy's GC is up and ready to face it. And it's going to open fire. There's also the other fire from these artillery pieces but that will easily that will be um, matched I presume by the fire from these positions and Foley is falling back to his defensible position as does Reddy so we're not actually going to see the fight going down here Reddy retreats to the water and start, is working on another Colossus He's also got T3 land production up here, and so he's producing harbies. And so he retreats his Colossus. On this side, we've also had the Colossus retreat from Protect, as the battleships from Nori join the cruisers in smashing up this holdout position of Orans up here. And we we're also seeing a lot of gunships massing for Resi, so maybe he's got a fan out there. It looks like they're mainly coming from Protect, who I think is actually handing them over to Resi. Kruger's con is pinned. Are they planning to try and get him somehow? Where's Foley's GC gone? It's a bit falling back here. It's all the way back here. Maybe it doesn't want to take far from... There are now... Still... There are still five turrets, but also battleships and carriers over here for Resi. And Nori is building an XP up here. He's built a chicken, which will come out of the water and presumably attempt to counter the GC from Protect, although Protect has just built another XP, can we see where that is? I'm not completely spotting it, we'll find it in a minute, I am sure. And look at this TMD, is that going to be enough to hold back the fire coming from the torrents though? Who can say? With two GCs done, it feels like Resley is about to push. And he'll be able to support it with a vast horde of gunships, protect waiting in the wings with his ASFs. But out comes that chicken, and look how much we now have at the beachhead for Nori. The chicken comes out. And this GC took enough damage and hasn't healed up yet that it won't be a match for the chicken. And this chicken can just smash in here. Smash in and take out pretty much everything that Orand and Protect have in their base. Could one chicken be enough to turn the tide of the game and just smash its way through here? Maybe it opens fire on the GC. 
So already down into the yellow, but the GC doesn't get any damage on it and just dies. And that chicken can advance now at will. There is RT trying to bombard it, but meanwhile over here we have the two GCs from Resi advancing back up by Flares, Harbies and a vast amount of T2 mobile AA. Foley is fleeing with this GC and having it join up with another one. He's got a third under construction, but that won't be there in time. So we're expecting to see a big fight here soon. There's a lot of PV here. Is Reddy going to try and crack it? Or is he going to go around the bottom and try and get into the air grid? I think the latter. And in comes the chicken. It takes out this smaller air grid and we see T1 bombers being spammed out to try and mop down the chicken. The two GCs from Foley can't afford to wait anymore and come forward. There are mobile shields to protect, there are even harbies to protect, but Foley can spam, it can spam bombers, he isn't. The GCs engage, and it looks like from the movement that Foley actually has the better engage here. The shields come in to try and protect, but the problem with that is that GCs are much taller than shields, and the GCs I believe can just fire over the top. Down goes one of Foley's GCs, but both of Reddy's are damaged. Reddy brings in his gunships, and they may be enough to swing the tide. And they are. Foley loses. Foley nearly loses. 3,000 hit points. Come on, my dude. He just got to turn and fire one shot and finish it off. But at the moment, your GC has taken three damage. There we go. So we now have two GCs going straight for Foley's base. But there's another GC just finished by Foley in time. Can it take on two damaged GCs? On the other side. Protects Air Base is also under threat, and here comes the chicken from Nori. Two GCs versus one, but the two are damaged. This one dies, giving Foley's GC some vet. And this one is looking like it's going to lose the face off, but Protect, his base, is, is just going to die. His whole air grid is going to be smashed by this chicken. He's trying to build a GC to, well, Protect. But that's not going to be anywhere near enough. It's going to be, it's going to be cancelled. This chicken with its five vets is going to make it in, and this is so close. Eight thousand hit points, ten thousand hit points. Six, five. That got down to five thousand hit points, but Foley has just about saved his airbase, and Protect hasn't. This could be a turning point in the game. But we can't speak too soon because there are two more GCs from Resi coming in through this defensive position here. If they can push in in time, I also like this, just really swarming flak in here so that any air unit which takes off is immediately shredded. The flak will die, but it will get some air kills on the way and Resi's two GCs come charging in. And look at poor old Protect, he's had his entire base smashed to pieces. Over here, Orand is still alive just about, but for how long there were Othiums surrounding him. He's building Ravages back here to try and provide some cover, but it feels like Orand is not long for this world. There were Othiums raining fire down on him, he's deep into the red. Boom. Down goes Orand, and we are left with only the pros. Everybody in the game is over 2,000 rated. So this is top tier play you're going to be seeing now, as those GCs have made it into Foley's airbase. Foley is losing things fast, that's HQ right there which he's about to lose. Boom, down it goes, and both Foley and Protect have now had their air bases mashed by the experimenters from the opposing team. 
Nori is not resting on his laurels and he's charging straight forward aiming towards Rezi's home base with this chicken. Protect is over here rushing for the water and it's just point defense in defense for Foley but that I don't think will be enough as this GC smacks its way through it and as if that weren't enough Rezi's other GC is pushing north towards Nori's base. Nori does have a chicken in the base of his own and Foley is sending T1 bombers but it's going to be hard to stop that GC especially as there's support sneaking around in the form of cover spam from Kulva and Protect has managed to bring a GC all the way up through the middle and into Nori's base but there's a chicken waiting for him, there's PD waiting for him and there's a shield for the chicken to hide under. In this circumstance I think my money is on the GC but there are harpies being brought in from Rizzi to help and that could be enough to turn the tide as the chicken takes a bad turn and the GC gets some free damage on it. Oh, this is not good for the chicken and it might be that the GC is actually going to win the day. Yes, look at this. That chicken is going down because Iron Storm may kill the GC which only has 24,000 hit points remaining until it gets vet from killing the chicken. Over here, protectors come out of the water and that's a mistake because this chicken's down to gunships from Rezi but the next chicken isn't and boom! Down goes Protect at 38 minutes. Meanwhile, the Iron Storm has indeed mashed up that GC, but that's not enough because we have another GC. That one we spoke about from Resistance is coming in now, but Nori has completed another chicken, so the experimental wars continue. This experimental is trying to make it to the water here, but there's enough gunships from Resi that I don't think it will. And Kuva, like a mad lad, has brought his com back here. Again, the fight goes down. Is it going to go the GC's way but then the GC dies to the Iron Storm? You know, I think it might. Down goes the chicken. The Iron Storm flares up. And the GC is going to be utterly minced by that damage. Down it goes. So now we have no XP fights going on over here. There's another one coming, but that's a little way away. This one has indeed been taken out. That was quite epic, but I think we can finally afford to go back to single screen. So at last we have time for a quick overview of the map and the eco. It looks like top team may actually be having power problems, they're fluctuating a lot, but in fact let's check that. Kulva having power problems, Resistance definitely having power problems, so we can't do an eco overview yet, whereas Nori and Foley, they're doing much better, but they don't know that Kulva's com is right here. So that could be a nasty surprise for them. However, could also be a nasty surprise for Kulva if one of these chickens comes his way. On this side we have yet another GC from Rezi coming charging in. And Foley is out of the water shooting things with his comm. This feels crazy dangerous because there is literally a GC right there for Rezi. Does it know about Foley? I don't think it does, you know. Ah, well just as I checked, the pin goes down, so it obviously does know about Foley. And immediately the GC turns and heads in that direction. Foley, I think, has noticed and is heading back towards the water. Is not heading back towards the water. This feels dangerous. Possibly suicidal. The pin goes down. Foley actually fires with his advanced range upgrade on the GC. He gets an overcharge in, and the GC hasn't noticed him. The GC's into the red, 
and Overcharge takes it down to 18,000 hits, 17,000, but Foley has been spotted and targeted, and he's shedding health. The GC on just 3,000, 2,000 hits, and it goes down, and Foley survives. Well played from Foley, taking out a GC with his cob at 40 minutes into the game. Nice play from Foley. And as it looks like the Ecos are beginning to settle down, we can see that the bottom team is now ahead because they've still got some of the Eco here, whereas top team absolutely do not have their equivalent. And I think that we're just in time because Kuva has been seen. This chicken is coming in. However, Kuva's got a transport here with which he can get out. He leaps on board and flies away just in the nick of time. Well done to Kuva for good awareness there. And Nori has come full circle and is bringing stuff into the water from literally his absolute opposite numbers position, which is pretty fun and he could be going for an attack across here the chicken is the chicken is not tall enough to do oh a couple of the shots are getting through i don't know whether that's by design on the map but he's trying i don't like it though i don't think he's actually getting enough work done here and there isn't anything in the way of torpedo power here but foley foley's been caught out the harpies have seen him and boom down goes foley before the gc even gets into range Leaving it as Nori on his own versus what's left of top team. The battleships are now coming into a position where they can shoot at that chicken, but it has actually managed to find a position where it can shoot out onto the rock. Sometimes, and it's getting damage done. Is that really the only HQ? Maybe. But, and if so, he's just lost it. Nice play from Nori. I think he's just trying to see how much damage he can get done before the chicken dies. These Othians could come and start, start doing torpedo work on these battleships because even battleships have no torpedoes. But And there we go. He's taken out pretty much everything of value apart from these two mechs right at the back. And now he goes into the water where the battleships can't get him. Lovely play there from Nori. And meanwhile, there's not much left here. That is, of course, Nori's naval HQ. And I think this GC could come and take it. They're pinging, wondering if that's a comp. It's not. It's just a blaze. And over here, Spam comes to take out the last of Nori's eco emplacements. What's Orand wondering about? He's wondering about this, why it's standing still. And I mean, I agree, that could come forward and take that. That could be Nori's only landage kill. Because I don't immediately see one up here. It would force Nori to rebuild it. Yeah. That could take away his T3 bird power on land. And indeed these Othium with their torps are trying to swarm down the battleship. Come on Rizzi, you need to move this boy over here. Move him forward, take out that. <coughs> Certainly Nori has been very thorough up here. And finally, forward goes Rezzy with his GC, with his spam, taking out the landage kill, and with that landage kill going down, we have reached complete base trade. There are no production buildings from top team in the top half, there are no production buildings from bottom team in the bottom half. Perfect base trade. I hope you're happy. I hope you're enjoying that feeling. I certainly am. Now, Rezzy has to worry about these underwater units and he's building torque bombers and he's now building T3 Eon torque bombers, so this is. And since there's no AA here that's been able to make it past the battleships, which are still alive, 
there is nothing to defend for these underwater units and the chickens can just be slowly picked apart from the air. Nori does have an air force but I don't think he's willing to sacrifice it until he's got these carriers <coughs> more fully up and running. And how are those chickens surviving? Well, not well. Look at this. They've got no answer to the torpedoes falling upon them from the sky. 10,000 hit points, 4,000 hit points. Boom, that chicken's down. And the battleships are doing what battleships do and simply tanking all the damage as the second chicken is targeted by the Solace torpedo bombers. And its hit points are shedding away just as quickly as those of its unfortunate brethren. That was accidental though, the top one was landed and even took a bit of damage from the Ion Storm. This chicken does need to be focused if Reddy wants to get it down. And Nori, meanwhile, is trying to set up actual naval production in this pond. However, the GC is repaying the, the favour that Nori went for over here, has taken out the naval yard, however there's a lot of torpedo units and battleships for when it pops out. And this is a nice defence for when it actually emerges, so I don't know how much it's going to get done here. However, that was Nori's naval HQ and he's going to have to rebuild it. However, Rizzi finds that there isn't any traction for this you see and it walks back through the water under torpedo fire all the way these battleships will ambush it when it comes out I don't think it's going to survive the other chicken has indeed been mashed by Reddy's torpedo bombers and he sends his battleships now with very little to threaten them out to drive Nori out of the water I do love the cheek of that coming into the water from your opposite numbers position and trying to set up there the yin and the yang as well, as one team pushes the other way, the other team pushes back across and the trade is even a balance of power. Now this is a lot of battleships that Nori has here and as I hover over them I'm not seeing any nuke production because if I saw nuke production, I would expect to see an awful lot of mass and energy being spent, and I'm not seeing any. Which, if I were Nori, I think I would be going for. I would be trying to drop nukes here, here, by sailing in here and fa getting as much as I could across there. And I'm not seeing much in the way or oh no, I take that back, there is an SMD here, though it's not yet loaded for Resi. The torrents have come back up and Resi is trying to use his position in the southern pond to fight his way back onto the northern landmass where he was originally based. Again though, these Othians are underwater where the Romans simply can't shoot them, but Rizzi brings his torp bombers in. And immediately we see two game enders started. Rezi is working on a paragon down here in the south. And at much the same time, Nori is working on a YOLO up here in the north, which he's carefully stealthed. Has Rezi stealthed his power? He has not. He's got two SMDs there, but he hasn't stealthed it. Torp this, says Protect. Probably has nuke. He's referring to this battleship, which is positioned in a place where it would launch nuke if it had one. But what Protect and his team don't know is that it doesn't actually have a nuke. However, there's no reason to leave it alive when it can easily be taken out. And the wave of solaces come swooping in and boom one pass takes out that battleship 
and there's more where that came from but the Soros's could, if Resi were on the ball, pick them off one by one. Nori has just walked across here, no transport, he literally just walked to come into what used to be Oran's old base where he set up the majority of his production including the YOLO. They're both going up at about the same speed, which is slowly of course, they're game enders, and neither team is really doing massively well on mass. Resi going for the next of the battleships, we are seeing flak turrets put up here because of course there's now no HQ for Nori to be able to produce T3 ships and does he want to rectify that or does he think he has enough to hold the pond? More and more anti-air going up as more and more torpedoes fall from Resi onto the battleships and this air force could come and take them out because Kuva, who has taken over control of air for the top, as they once were, team, is still quite far back. However, these are all aircraft carriers with excellent anti-air. This is a cruiser, and so Nori is going to be able to bring those down slowly and work his way through the top of us. These flats have done their job. I think, all in all, Nori's navy is now safe. YOLO is good, I think, says Foley. It's now about 40% done. Shows the power. However, the difference here is that the Paragon needs time to have its resource generation converted by build power into stuff on the field, whereas the YOLO can start firing almost straight away. Kuva has decided to play it safe and retreated his comm deep into the water as we often see on Setons. Resistance with his heavy shield and T3, the toughest an Aeon comm without vet can be, is just bores out, pootling around on the enemy landmass, what could possibly go wrong? And these torrents have done an excellent job. Look at that. They are holding Nori out of both Resi's original base and Kuva's because anything that comes within this huge range here just gets TML'd. The YOLO has been spotted by Protect. Kuva says nearly three loaded SMDs in South Beach. This one is loaded. This one is loaded. I can't see the other two. Oh, he's got one there which is loaded and another which isn't, so that might be enough to protect the power for a while, but for those who aren't in the know, it takes eight anti-nukes running at full capacity. Oh, yeah, and there's another one here which is now loaded, so they will have a bit of respite from the YOLO, but only a bit. It takes eight anti-nukes working at full speed to counter a YOLO. And that YOLO is now into the green for Nori. Will the power be able to be converted into something valuable, like three salvations or something might smack down the YOLO before it busts through the, those anti-nukes? We are going to have to see. And these torrents can range quite a lot, but as yet, they haven't been able to capitalise on this. With these torrents, should Resi or Kulva be putting up a beachhead here, trying to get some production and eco set up in Resi's old base? I mean, obviously, from a dispassionate observer's point of view, I can advise that, but... I am not on the field trying to both macro and micro this vast horde of units. Now, Kulva is massing strats, we can see here, in an attempt to take out the YOLO but it looks like the YOLO is getting on rather faster than the power in fact the YOLO is done and we are about to see its first nuclear missile launching up it goes and I am sure that Nori will want to launch straight away 
And look at that, indeed he does. Where is he targeting? Well, no surprises, he's targeting... He's not actually targeting directly on the para, and I'm not sure why. Did he think there was too much SMD further back? Because I think that the SMDs here... Yeah, this SMD here is going to be well within range. <coughs> And that scout shows that they knew about the power. The, this SMD stops one. This stops the next, but the second is launched. Oh, I get it. He's trying to keep them out of range of these two SMDs. Sneaky. Because that hit with a YOLO would just about take the power out with it. Will the third one get through? That one's empty. That one's got one in the clip, but one isn't enough to stop a yell, though. He has started a salvation here, has Resi. In fact, he started two. Strategic launch detected. But barely has the first one arrived when the next one launches. It is stopped. <clears throat> and so now we have to ask the same question yet again. Will the fourth one get through? It's a waiting game for poor old Resi and Kova. Strategic launch detected. And they're being launched faster than they can even fly across the map. If this one doesn't get through, I'm sure the next will. This one's going to get through, though. And boom. Up it goes. It's waves of destruction come flaring out. Are they going to reach the power? Boom! Yes, they are. The Paragon goes up in smoke, and with it, so do what I now hesitate to call top teams' chances. <coughs> Strategic launch detected. As the nuclear barrage continues, and what can they do? Well, Resi thinks the answer is nothing. Resi resigns, leaving everything to poor old Kova. The Strat Snipe heads in, but. In comes Nori's air defense. The strap snipe is being torn apart by anti air and fighters. It's going to cut nowhere near the YOLO. And with that, their last best hope for peace as the YOLO smacks out the Navy. Their last best hope for peace is taken Strategic away. The nuke is now free to rain experimental nuclear damage all across what is now Kova's base. And Kuva has nothing left that he can possibly do. And he resigns. What a game. What a Setons. We all love a complete base trade, and this was a complete and full base trade. Should top team, or as they now are bottom team, have rushed a game ender faster? Could they have prevented the YOLO just smashing up everything tell me what you think in the comments below while you're down there don't forget to like subscribe and obey i'm the commissar and i will see you next time